Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of DeLorean Tech. And today we're at DeLorean Motor Company Midwest for a shop tour. Hi, I'm Mike McLaughlin. Me and my wife Susie own the DeLorean Motor Company Midwest location. And we're gonna give you guys a shop tour today. Okay, so here we are in the, uh, the showroom. So yeah, this is our showroom. We've got uh, my personal car in here today. Uh, we usually have one or two in here. We can, and in the winter, uh, when we're usually high on cars in the building, we can squeeze three in here, believe it or not, real tight. Nice, nice. So, a lot of stuff for sale too, huh? Yeah, we've got kind of our swag wall, as we call it over there, with uh, merchandise and some parts uh, that, you know, when people visit, they can check it out. Yeah, it's really cool. Now, you guys carry exclusive parts? Or at least maybe you used to at some at some. We do point. a few things, yeah. Okay. And some things we've done uh, over the years and don't do anymore. This is just one off the top of my head that uh, is an exclusive we do here in the Midwest. Is these stainless shift balls, uh, especially with the. There's another guy who does something similar, but we've got the both the five-speed shift pattern and the DMC logo and the neutral gate there, which is kind of neat. Um, that's the one thing off the top of my head. I know there's a few other parts. And you guys do machine wheels here, but I think they all do, right? You uh, and that's, right now, I'm the only one that I know okay. that does that. Okay. Uh, so we, we do three options on wheel coating. Uh, this is a, uh, there's actually two machine finishes here. This is machine where it's been machine lathe cut and then uh, clear coated. This is machine cut, it's buffed, and then clear coated. These are so similar, we don't offer this anymore. Okay. And then you can obviously get them in a stock uh, powder coated finish like this, or the darker early finish, cool. like uh, like this car would have behind you. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yep. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, it looks great. So, and then this is a, my uh, little closet office. A bit messy, but uh, that's where I do my my work. Oh, you got the uh, electrical diagram. Yeah, right the diagram's here. great to have. Yeah. Yeah. Diagnostics. Totally. Yeah, this is a cool, cool uh, painting, actually, from an artist. Uh, when we went to a tech session back in 2012 in Canada, they All gave right. us that as a gift, which is a pretty cool thing. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. So this is where my wife Susie sits. Oh, cool. uh, so you guys work together then, huh? That's awesome. Of course, yeah. And then this is Stephanie that anybody who's called here has uh, talked to. She's been with us for five years. She's not in today, but uh, she answers all the phones and takes care of uh, the parts all by herself so uh, <laughs> I like that that's pretty cool yeah that's actually a stained glass that was made for me uh, by my mother-in-law oh it's, really nice she put a lot of hours into trying yeah. to get the louvers on there and and do it at an angle yeah um, she got the correct uh, with the you know how the the, the brake lights are textured she got that right <laughs> yeah I thought that was a really good touch she yeah. noticed that the middle one is yeah. really more smooth right and, uh, right exactly and pick the right class for it so that's yeah. kind of neat this is a you guys may have seen this but I uh, use this all the time when people ask questions about how the car is built um, and so this shows you you know the the double wide frame uh, with the suspension drivetrain and everything bolted to it and then on top of that sits the fiberglass structure and then the fiber and the fiberglass structure keeps this rigid because this is really a mild thin gauge steel um, so this gives it strength and and helps it to not flex and then the tub holds all the interior pieces and all the body panels around the outside with like the thousandth car this is a great one i like to pull it out we'll hit this later but you can see these cars here on a shipping carrier that have all these foam pieces that have been scotch taped to them. Oh yeah. And yeah. so the most any car, if it's an original paint, will show a sign of that uh, scotch tape that's over the years has made oh, yeah. a blemish. Yeah. You can see a color change in the in the paint. Yeah, I've seen that in a few cars. Yeah, and that, in my opinion, that's uh, something that would not have no shown up on a cars when they were new. Right. That adhesive that's on there over decades has made a discoloration. Okay. And it's funny because people like hate those blemishes in their fascia and when you tell them you know that's a sign that it's a factory paint then yeah. they kind of you know embrace the flaw right so right. cool this right. is a poster that came out in the 80s and, and this kind of shows you how much of a splash the car uh made when it when it came out and it is true it's you know this car was a highly anticipated car and i believe there's a lot of truth in the heading there that uh you know america's yeah. most talk, talked about car yeah for sure So some customers have, uh, you know, when Dave and Julie Swingle open this, they ask customers to send photos of just their car, not themselves. And so we've got 
you know, several of those hanging around. This is an article they did on us in the, the local newspaper. Um, we've got a couple of those. This one was from back in uh, 2015. Awesome. This is James James Aspie's personal car that uh, he made a pretty cool poster with. It used to be available. I don't cool. think they sell it anymore. Little sort of things no longer offered. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look who's here! The Haulers. Hey, fancy meeting you guys here. You guys just kind of helping out today. Well, you know, it's answering always, phones and it's, stuff. It's, it's always both ways. We, we we need help. I mean, if if we're able to do anything, we. we <laughs> So they're work, you're working on their car? Yeah. Okay, it's cool. A, hey, you know, really when in... We have a needy child, and uh, <laughs> unfortunately, it, it's, it was close enough to the spa that it could get uh, treatment. Awesome. And awesome. Quality care. So we're doing a shop tour video, so this is actually cool that you guys are making a little cameo appearance. We're everywhere. <laughs> hey, you guys are everywhere. Awesome. I'm a little afraid of uh, over saturation. What do they call it? Overexposure. Overexposure. Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys are. You, you guys you are. You did fine. get a lot of sun yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing here now with my personal car, a uh, VIN 1021. Um, I've owned this car since about. Purchased this car, I should say, in 2008. Actually bought this car on the day. Uh, my wife and I uh, left for our honeymoon. So, oh really? <laughs> yeah, so it's got kind of, some kind of cool history. We sold it to another guy when we purchased this building, uh, and he had it for about eight years, and then we were lucky enough to uh, purchase it back from him about a year ago. So nice. It's a you know nice, pretty original. Uh, has been updated. It's road ready. This car's turnkey. Uh, you know could drive this car wherever, but uh, it is pretty original. Original interior, original paint on the fascias, uh, original wheel finish. Um, so it's been preserved well, stored well, and, and we've done a pretty thorough mechanical go through, so the car's pretty, you know, ready to go. Yeah, it's awesome. So it's your personal vehicle then, huh? Yeah. I'm keeping this one. Yeah, I've got pictures <laughs> of my kids when they were little in this oh, one. Oh, nice. It's, there's something about your first car that, uh, you know. Sentimental, right? Yeah, there's, Sentimental there's value. nothing like your first car. Uh, so we're glad to have this one back. Yeah, well, that's great, man. Congratulations on getting yeah. it back. <laughs> yep. It's not easy. Sure. So we've been in business here since 2007. Uh, Dave and Julie Swingle uh, opened this location and I was the first employee they hired. Uh, so I worked for Dave and Julie for nine years as a, uh, their shop technician and then became shop manager. Uh, and then in 2016, uh, Dave retired and my wife Susie and I purchased the, the business from them. So we, Midwest covers uh, 13 states for, uh, you know, taking care of our DeLorean owners in that territory, and we do see some cars from Canada. And uh, we, in, so we've been open at this point now about 14 years, and we've come in right up on about 1,100 service tickets uh, of vehicles. That's the main uh, bread and butter of what we do is customer repair and restoration. Uh, we also do part sales to anyone in that territory and, uh, and do some car sales. So uh, it's kind of the three pieces of what we take care of here. So this is our uh, lunchroom, break room, small conference room, catch-all, daycare. Uh, I've got three kids and uh, nice. my four-year-old is here today uh, playing with blocks. And, and this so, is cool. Uh, it's like a, yeah, it is like a daycare, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my kids do. DMC, daycare. Got, uh, I'm sure they're going to have some crazy memories of uh, mom and dad's shop when they yeah. grew up. So. So this is where we keep all the back yeah, this, the future you know, stuff. <laughs> so there's some, you know, swag that have been given to us over the years or that we've collected. Uh, you know, this is Jason. My tech is a total car nut, and he, this is actually his collection of his uh, DeLorean Hot Wheels. Um, nice. And uh, got a couple of flux capacitors here, and you know, just some swag we've collected. Uh, this is worth mentioning. This is kind of the uh, parts wall of shame so odd failures that we've seen you know this is a expensive repair there a set of smoked crank bearings uh horribly bent uh trailing arm bolts oh yeah nice <laughs> it's good to see like examples right yeah 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 this is a water pump uh, that the shaft snapped completely off of oh, i think that's the only time i've ever seen that particular failure it's coming on uh, here. Is that a ground cable? Yeah. Oh you God. know, Oliver was thinking this came off of his uh, personal car. Oh, really? I can't oh, remember exactly. But 
And his car just has, uh, I think he told me the other day he's up to 827,000 miles yeah. on it. So yeah. that one sees uh, excessive wear for sure. Of course. Of course. Cracked cylinder liner. Oh, geez. Um, geez. I don't think that happened inside the car, but it's still mm -hmm. made the wall. Mm -hmm. This is a, a train plug that some poor guy tried to no, like, help me get out. I think oh, we actually God. finally, it came in mutilated and we actually were able to get this out uh, by catching an air hammer on the side okay. and driving the thing loose. Oh, um, but uh, yeah, that one's seen better days for sure. Um, the old coolant overflow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think that yeah, one failed. Yeah, this one has quite the failure. This oh, is what geez. happens with right these. The so it's seam. a good seam just split wide open. You can see a, a large gap there. So, oh, yeah, yeah. yep, yep. So that one's no darn good. So this is why people change them out, obviously, to metal. Right. Um, so here's one that uh, you can't really tell, but this one was an odd. You, you see just a little bit of wear that happened here. Mm -hmm. What happened here is there's a pressure relief on this that once it builds, once you build about 80 psi of uh, pressure, this will bleed off the rest through this hole. Okay. And you can see uh, that this plunger got stuck and oh, would not yeah. build oil pressure. Okay. And luckily we caught this really early and the oil pump had to be replaced, but uh, yeah, that was kind of a scary one. Yeah. And it was on a car that had just been sitting and brought back to life okay. and then uh, had pretty clean oil. Uh, but uh, yeah, this plunger you can see is, should be seated and you can see with the shifted past, all the pressure built in here would bleed right through the hole. Right. This is supposed to slide back further and this one's just, you know, not. So that could have been a catastrophic failure. Um, so yeah. We'll take you out into the main shop area. Got a couple of guys out here today that you can meet. So this is where all the magic happens, if you will. So we've got uh, three lifts and uh, all the repairs are done in here. Um, guys are getting it back to looking like a shop because we just had our open house uh, over the weekend, a couple days ago. And, uh, we're trying to get back to business here. So about how many cars do you have typically on average at any given time? So we usually have a 25 to 30 is very typical. Right now we have 27 in for service. Uh, our high water mark of a uh, number of cars in the building was 37 at one given time. Um, that was when we had a little extra storage space in a unit next door. Um, we can comfortably fit 30 cars after that. It gets to where you're trying to tuck them all under place and there's no place to walk. As you can see, uh, we're at 27 right now and the place is pretty full. So I'd like to meet a couple of our techs. Jason, you got a second to say hello? This is Jason. Hello. Jason, hey, Jason. Britain. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. He's yeah. been with us for uh, a little, about 10 and a half years, so uh, anybody who's had their car serviced here uh, in the last 10 years, this guy's been working on it and managing uh, our younger guys. Yep. So. Awesome. Good meeting you. You too. Thank you. And then over here wrenching on a time machine is uh, Jake. Yep. How's it going? <laughs> Jake's been with us for about a year and a half, and he's uh, Great young tech that's learning a lot and uh, going to school to, to get a degree in automotive technology. And uh, we're lucky to have him here too. Awesome, good meeting you. Is that yeah, a nice subwoofer you. down there? Yep. <laughs> I guess that's one place to put it, right? Yep. It fits pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So, and this is, uh, if you guys, had, yeah, you met Terry and Oliver and this is their time machine. Yep. So, and it's just uh, having, it's running kind of rough so they, uh, Brought it in and we're gonna try to iron that out for him. Yeah, so this is the car we mentioned earlier that has, uh, Oliver tells me it's got 827,000 mi miles on it That's at this crazy, point. that's crazy. And they still- two uh, engines, I think, right? They, uh, yeah, it's on, I would say 2.5 engines because it's had, uh, <laughs> it's had uh, three short blocks. Uh, the last time they did it, they reused the heads and just replaced the short block. So, uh, stage two motor. Um, Let's go stage two. Okay. No yeah. wonder it was hauling ass the other day. We were trying to keep up in this rental car, and I was like, how are they doing this? <laughs> now it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were following them to lunch, and they were just like, what the hell? You know? Yeah, I'm told he's uh, got quite the left foot, I think. But, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's fine. This cool car attracts all kinds of attention. 
So every DeLorean has a story and that's kind of what we love to hear from our customers. Uh, you know, the story about how they bought their car, uh, the history they know about it. Uh, and these, th right. these two have a pretty interesting story that I'll share with you guys. Uh, these are what we call in the shop the twins. Uh, they're consecutive VIN cars, VIN uh, 663 is over here and 664. Um, these were both uh, Chestnut lease vehicles. Uh, so Chestnut was uh, the one the leasing company that DeLorean would have leased all their company vehicles through. Um, so all the cars that were used for advertising or for any cars that were given uh, employees for uh, executives or driven for technical or used for uh, training. They also both are still on their MSO. So MSO is a manufacturer statement of origin. You can see it here. So this is a certificate of ownership that came from DeLorean Motor Company and would have been given to the dealership uh, that sold the car. And this is basically like a, you know, a title paperwork that would only be for a dealer. Once, once uh, the car comes off of an MSO as soon as it's, you know, has a new owner. Um, so these two paperwork wise are, you know, considered new cars. They never had an owner. Um, they also were auctioned off. Uh, I believe there's some paperwork here. They were auctioned off in February of 1983. Uh, in California when they sold off, uh, the article said 88 vehicles. Uh, I'm told there were less than that at the auction, but uh, the advertising anyway said 88 cars. And these uh, were bought by uh, 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 the Hodges family, uh, and I found uh, these cars through a gentleman named uh, Tim Hodges. Tim's father owned uh, several dealerships, a Ford dealership in California, and bought both of these cars at auction, uh, consecutive VINs and then kept them in storage for 40 years uh, together in a barn in uh, Lake Elsinore, California. And uh, probably four months ago or so, we uh, were lucky enough to purchase these two. And, uh, and I think I remember seeing that one. Yeah, I saw that one, so you yeah. guys picked them up. Okay, yeah, I didn't know yeah. that. So, they, cool. were, so they, were, they, were, they were actually on a Hemmings auction and uh, we were not the uh, high bidder on the car. Um, we were outbid by someone else and that, that sale fell through. And then we were contacted by Hemmings uh, and, and wound up talking to Tim and, and, and brought the cars here. That's great, man. I, that's... This car, so it's kind of funny. You know, I'll, I'll show this car to certain car guys and they'll be like, oh man, that's a real, that's a, the roughest car in here. And, uh, you know, in my eyes, I see it as, you know, the nicest DeLorean I've ever seen. Of course, it needs a full restoration. This car has 14 miles on it. Wow. <laughs> um, so, and, and it's, we're trying to pe still piece together some of the story, but our best uh, guess is this was uh, the California QAC parts car. Oh, okay. And so that would explain why, uh, you know, the POGs tell me that uh, if, if it was ever registered to an individual with the company, it would have come off of its MSO and been registered to a, titled to a specific person. Uh, this is Jeff Siner told me that, who's uh, one of the POGs you guys may have met. Right. Um, and, uh, and the fact that it has such low mileage, I think early on it was probably, you know, began being parted out and the car was really never on So it's about, you know, uh, when they purchased it, the car did not have an engine in it. Uh, and then the owners oh, since uh, put a motor in the car, um, but it hasn't really been, ever been hooked up or never been driven. Kind of peek in there, but the louvers are. Yeah. And then this one here has uh, 1,600 miles on it, and uh, I believe the paperwork says they bought it with around 1,200. So this is a much more complete car. Still needs a mechanical restoration. Um, the nice thing about both of them is they were in the uh, high desert of California, so as far as rust is concerned, they're very clean, dry cars. Nice. Um, but yeah, again, a very nice car. The owners. Uh, the owner's son had a, a story of uh, his dad did not know he was driving this car around and when he found out he said, you know, I don't want you driving either of these cars. Um, and so I think they put, you know, 600 miles or so on this car. Um, and, then, and then after his dad's instruction they quit driving it. So. so that's kind of the story of the, the twins. Of the, of the twins. And I'll take you through here to our uh, storage side. So, uh, 
Uh, this this has been referred to as the oh crap room because usually when I give a shop tour and you know the shop blows people's minds and when they see how many Jeez. are here they they usually utter oh crap as soon as they walk through the door. Yeah, oh crap <laughs> for sure. And you got another another time machine in there as well. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, like, whose cars are these? I mean, are these like? Uh... So these are cars that are either waiting to be serviced or waiting to be picked up. Okay. Um, you know, we the average car I'd say is our average car comes in here. We we do two different. Uh, styles of service either it's you know cars that come in for a day or two and leave or ones that come in and have major uh you know restoration work done they'll have a full detailed inspection and have a more you know broad range of work done to them uh, those cars are probably here on, on average for three to six months and so this is where they'll you know we don't leave anything outside if it comes here we don't want the elements to take their toll on them uh, at this age, they really can't handle it too much as far as interior without showing some type of damage. So everything's stored inside. This is obviously where you keep all your parts and stuff. Yeah, so some of this racking actually came from the factory. And when we opened in 2007, this was shipped in from Texas. Uh, and then the, you can see the door crates up top uh, also came from the factory. Uh, this is a sheet metal rack uh, that was built custom to hold the sheet metal for shipping. Uh, it's got other stuff mixed in. It would have it would have held uh, rear quarter panels. And then you see next to that is hoods. Obviously, these are some used, but there's louvers there. Um, these are new and used hoods, uh, new and used doors, both left and right. Um, if you go on down from there, there's a box that has engine that cardboard box has new engine covers and louvers in it. Um, and you can see, you know, used stuff. Uh, sprinkled around. Uh, there's motors down here. If you look, you can tell by the clean, new and used mixed in, but this is a, that's a brand new automatic transmission. Um, uh, and I'm not sure if th that's a brand new engine. And a lot of these have, you can tell that, I believe they've never been fired. They have the, um, the crank is at, you know, top end center, which, uh, you know, so I believe that they were assembled with the cranks at top end center and have never been fired. And we have three, you know, brand new engines here. So parts availability for the car, for the for a forty year old car, is pretty excellent. Nice. And then if you pan over here to the, the left, there's a, we have a few shelves where you can see the wiring harness is hanging, and that's again another section of used that we uh, hang on to uh, just in case we need. Yeah. It's always good to have some spare wiring harnesses, <laughs> yeah. for sure. You can see that in the two frames here, you know, every every car's got a story. And the, the one on the left was actually the first car that we worked on uh, that had a frame replacement. That one's got some good rot holes in it. If, uh, if you were a talented welder, that one could be reused. And the one on the right there was actually a, a really nice uh, frame that, uh, you know, that the guy decided to replace with a stainless frame. Oh, nice stainless. This painted car has a story as well. That's a that's a that's a car that was sold new with a twin turbo aftermarket setup put on it and painted. It was sold out of a dealership in Ohio um, that was owned by John DeLorean's brother. Oh, really? He painted uh, two to three dozen cars, and that's one of them. It's a nice looking one. It almost reminds me of Starsky and Hutch in a way. Yep. <laughs> the white and, stripe. Yeah, and a room full of DeLoreans. The candy apple red one stands out. Definitely not a bad color choice for it, I guess. Well, you got a lot of spare tires. Yeah, we saved some. There's some NCTs over there. There's oh, really? several sets of uh, <laughs> there's several sets of new tires as well that we just decided that right now they're a little difficult to get. It takes us, you know, up to two months to get tires, so we've decided to start stocking them so we don't have to wait. What do you think about these new hand cook tires that they've got in? Uh, uh, you know, the speed rating on them isn't the best, but uh, it's the only tire in probably the last eight plus years that uh, comes in the correct 235 mm -hmm. size in the mm -hmm. rear. And they're the same brand and, and model line, tread pattern, front and rear. So that's our go-to tire right okay. now. Yeah. Okay. The other one we've used is a general, uh, the general uh, goes to a 225 in the rear. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, but uh, hand cooks are, as long as we can get them, like I said, it takes us uh, up to two months, sometimes more to get those in. Okay. So they're not easy to get, but uh, but we do like the way they look and the way they, you know, it's nice to have the correct size on that car. Right, right, sure. exactly. It's just that speed rating. I think it just kind of get give us something a little higher. Yep. I remember that, yeah. 
and you can see we've got you know the some of the difficult to find parts there's a in the front there hanging on the wall is a you know left front fender that's ready to bolt on a car oh yeah we've got a couple that are damaged that uh you know with enough with enough effort they could be reused um so we try to you know have that hard to hard to find stuff in case somebody comes in with a damaged left front fender we can get the car back on the road yep yeah those are hard to find <laughs> so whose time machine is that uh, this is a, a customer named Chris. Uh, this has a great story. So I was, uh, you, you, I always tell this story of, uh, of this guy. So way back, probably going back uh, 13 years ago or so, uh, Julie Swingle got a call from a mother looking uh, to do a birthday party for her son and wanted to do it at the shop. And Julie said, you know, we don't do birthday parties. We're at a repair shop. And the mother was really insistent and said, hey, we'll only have two or three kids couple of cupcakes and we'll be out of her out of here and and twisted her arm and said he's such a delorean fan she talked julie into doing a uh a birthday party for this kid um i was not there i remember hearing the story it was on a saturday i was not working um so i never met the kid uh so one day i get a call from a guy who had bought a car from california sight unseen and was shipping it into the shop it was a project that uh he wanted us to go through and get running for him again and uh, so he shows up to meet the car for the first time when the car carrier shows up. So we saw the car for the first time together. He's all excited. And then he tells me he's the birthday boy. And my first reaction is, what the heck are you talking about? <laughs> I was like a 10-year-old kid. Well, 12 years had passed, and he's a 22-year-old man, and, uh, and he was buying his car for the first time. So that's a great story about why you, you, know, you never know who's going to be a customer and why you treat everybody with respect. And take the time to give him the tours and go out of their way. And who knows if, if uh, Julie had not said yes to him, it, you know, his passion may have uh, fizzled out for the car. So, you know, this is his own ter interpretation with the shiny fascias and, uh, you know, things like that. But he's having a heck of a lot of fun with the car, and that's what really matters. Awesome. Now, it looks pretty good. Now, do you do time machine conversions here like they do in California, or, or are you Somebody we, else does that around. We here. do not. Do not. Okay. We do not. Yeah. It's kind of a specialty thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course, we you know we service the Delorean part of the car, but we've yet to you know dabble in. Uh, honestly, we're it's uh, we're busy enough just keeping the regular keeping Deloreans the regular on the road that we, we've never you know delved into the, the the prop stuff. Okay, so this is the parts room, huh? Yep. Oh wow, look at this. So this is our parts room. I would say 98% of what you would need from day to day uh, you can get here. So this is all the smaller parts that we didn't see outside um, that are bagged and tagged. Um, so like I said, 98% of it I'd say we can get off of these shelves if it's something we don't have in stock. Um, that's a weird item. We can get it from Texas within uh, a week or less. And again, the back wall of this is full with some uh, original interior that, you know, we keep in case we ever need it. Let's go take a look. <laughs> sure. Look at all this stuff. I'm actually making clear ones of these. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just like to look. A few other folks do too, so. Oh, look at all this stuff. So it's all numbered, easy to find with the parts numbers on the boxes. Yep. So each shelf has its own uh, location. So it, it's it's from left to right and then you know we start with a at the bottom and and move up uh a b c d e f you see this is nine c f squeeze through here look at all this stuff a lot of interior stuff too huh? nice seat covers all right <laughs> oh, lots of manuals and owner's manuals and stuff in here as well. That's cool. This is our small packing and shipping area where uh, Stephanie will probably box, you know, three to five packages a day and uh, ship them out for your parts needs. 
Cool. So how does that work when uh, you, you get an order, when you go online uh, on the DMC or the DeLorean.com website, and uh, do they forward the order to you guys if it's close to you, or do, can people just order it directly from you? How does that work? Yeah, you can do it either way. If you okay. order on DeLorean.com, we get forwarded the order, and if we can fill the order fully, uh, it, it will... Drop, it will ship from our location. If we can't fill the order, uh, Texas will fill the order. So that's one way. And you can. Uh, we do have customers that will either call us direct or email Stephanie direct, and uh, you know then it will for sure come from this location. Oh, here we are back in the uh, daycare room. Yeah. <laughs> And that's actually a different like company there, right? Yeah, like so that. we share we share the building with uh you know, we're in like half the building or so about sixty percent of the building, and the other forty percent is used by a different business. Okay. So And that's the shipping trailer that you guys yeah, that's use. That's our enclosed trailer. So if you're in a, if you're within about four hundred miles of us, we're competitive at picking up a car in a single car trailer and we'll go around and I'd say up to uh, you know 30% of our cars or so will get shipped in because they don't run or the or the owner doesn't want to put miles on them or, or just wants the convenience of having us pick it up. So uh, that's the tra that trailer. I've had a couple over the years, but that trailer's probably had 50, 60 DeLoreans in it easily, and we've probably shipped close to 200 cars. Awesome. So this is kind of the... So this is really the location back here where most of the open house stuff goes on, and it's... Uh, Definitely a different site here when uh, <laughs> it's kind of a little bit of open space that uh, we have when... Uh, it's a great area to have it. Going on. Yeah. It goes from yeah. full to empty pretty quick. Yeah, for sure. All right, Mike. Well, thanks a lot for the tour. Really sure. appreciate it. And thanks for hosting the open house the other day. It was really awesome. Great. Really appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Hey, guys. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see more about DMC Midwest, check out their YouTube channel, DeLorean Nation. So they've got videos on the DeLorean, the community. It's actually a really cool channel. You should definitely check it out. I'll drop a link down in the description here and also in this video. So when you get a chance, go ahead and check out DeLorean Nation. And once again, thanks for watching DeLorean Tech.